call the meeting to order. This is the uh, Northampton Public Works Commission. It's Wednesday, March 25th. This meeting is being recorded by Northampton Community TV. Uh, first item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have any from either of you two gentlemen? Oh, I have a comment. I have a comment. Okay. Uh, I guess I have several of them. I attended the last meeting. And I, I don't know uh, who the roads engineer was. Uh, David but anyway, I, I was quite impressed with his presentation and, and the streets that he's going to fix up. I mean, like those are, well, also I live on Chesterfield Road, so he was going to do that. I was glad to hear that. But when they say Woodlawn Avenue, Pomeroy Terrace, I'm glad that you're addressing those streets because they're just a mess. And I thought it was an excellent presentation. So I was glad to hear that. And the other thing that I, I'd like to comment on I've also attended, like you're doing logging in the watershed, mm -hmm. and the first segment, I can come on the first segment that you started on Chesterfield Road between Kennedy and Reservoir Road, like I, I have to tip my hat to you, that, that's really a beautiful job that they're doing. Uh, and I was talking to, I, guess, I think it's Nicole, mm -hmm. and Michael the logger, and okay. Cotton, and uh, it's, it's Really impressive. I attended the meeting last fall when they said what they were going to do and try and get the maples going. I said, they'll go in there and log it and screw the whole thing up. They are actually like lifting up each tree, spending an hour on each tree doing it. And it's uh, really uh, looks beautiful so far. So uh, those are the two comments. And uh, I guess one more comment. You know, the other reason I'm, I'm going to start attending meetings, I'm, I'm sort of interested in the dam, you know, and the decision that you made the decision. Which but dam? The upper reservoir dam, Robert's upper reservoir dam. And now, I know, I'm trying to figure out what's happening with that, because now you're removing it. And as I said several years ago, I'm very interested in the process of removing it and the siltation. Now there's been some change in plans. So, so I'm interested in following that. I'm still on that. So. That's the main reason I'm coming down here. But like I said, I was very impressed with the presentation and what they're doing there. So it's a, you should get some feedback. I know like you, you hear a lot of complaints from people, but that's two areas you're doing very good in, I think. If those roads get done. <laughs> Thank you. Just a couple of, I, I don't know if I missed this at some meeting or not. This, has there been any decision from above as to what the function of this commission actually is? Is it advisory or is it? A, do you give advice? Do you receive advice? Is, what's the purpose anymore? And I don't know if anything has actually been decided or put on paper. Or the people who created you ought to have some idea what they want from you and have they expressed that information. Second one is there's only two of us here from outside. And as meetings go, 5.30 in the afternoon is probably one of the most inconvenient times to have a meeting for public input. People work, people are coming home, people are hungry, got to take care of the kids. And the other thing is that there's one posted that's 8 o'clock in the morning. Another rather inconvenient time if you're looking for public input or maybe you're not looking for public input. And I guess that one's on capital improvements, which is a money issue. And it seems like an 8 o'clock in the morning meeting is just the insiders having input as to what's going on. And one last one, speaking of money, is the enterprise funds again and the fiduciary responsibility to the rate payers for how that money is spent and who's spending it. Right now, all of the enterprise funds are in, apparently, control of one body. And it's not an elected body anymore since you're not part of it. And the enterprise funds are all of a sudden being tapped for things that are questionable, like portions 15% of the mayor's salary and the city council's salary and uh, payment in lieu of taxes and things like that. And I'm just wondering who makes those decisions and who's got some fiduciary responsibility to the public on how that money is being spent. And I know I've brought that topic up before, and we'll probably bring it up again, but it's something that should be resolved one way or the other. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. It's the approval of the minutes of the March 11, 2015 Public Works Commission meeting. Move approval. Second. I provided a couple of very minor comments to BJ, otherwise I thought they were good. I didn't find anything. Oh, he looked hard. Ah. <laughs> Any other comments? All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion passes. Um, under new business, I asked for this item to be placed here. It might help to have this discussion with a full board, but let me bring it up anyway. As um, I was looking at the agenda for this meeting, it, it appeared that we other than updates under old business, uh, we really don't have much work to do at the moment. We, I see a couple of large tasks coming up, review of budget at some point, and review of the um, planning and report that's being done for the wastewater treatment plant and the sewer collection system. And I think those will occupy a fair amount of our time once we get to the appropriate point. So. Um, I wanted to get a sense for whether um, the members of this commission would like to meet every two weeks even though there might not be much on the agenda or if it would be your preference to perhaps meet once a month until um, our workload picks up. I guess I would suggest leaving it on the two-week schedule, but feeling free to cancel meetings, mm -hmm. not, a, not a day or two before, but a week before or something, if there is, in fact, nothing or nothing that we need to get into. Okay. But the basic framework, I think, I would prefer to see left alone. Sure. That sounds like a good compromise. I mean, as long as we cancel before it gets posted, so whatever that is, five days before? Or? Fridays usually we do the posting. Usually I try to do it on Friday. This time I couldn't do it till Monday. Yeah. But you, you could almost decide on a meeting-to-meeting -meeting basis. Like, what we host, what, what is the, when would the next meeting be? 25th? April 8th. April 8th. Probably the next meeting, so. Second and fourth. I was thinking something similar that maybe at the end of this meeting we could decide in Can general we? whether there's enough on the agenda to meet at the next meeting. Right. And then certainly if something comes up, right. we can we can let the members know and hold the meeting. But um, rather than I, I I suspect we'll have a pretty good idea if we need to come back in two weeks once this meeting once each meeting is over. Well, that's that's what I was looking to get mm -hmm. some discussion on. And you, like we said, it's too bad not everybody's here. Mm -hmm. um, and there is also the idea that if people uh, then say they won't be coming to a meeting, will we have a quorum? Like, I guess you didn't hear about MJ. I sort of recollected what uh, Pat said, but there's still only a basic quorum. Well, we're also missing a person now, right? right? And we're also missing a person. So it's going to be more important that they let us know. Okay. Next item was uh, reserved for topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate. And I don't believe there are anything. There's One item. What's that? It actually came up uh, today. We have a kickoff meeting, or the Department of Public Works has a kickoff meeting with the matrix consulting group the mayor has a hire to do an organizational and a managerial assessment of the department that's going to be on the monday april 6th at nine o'clock here uh, robin hardy from the matrix group is coming out from boston i kick off meeting with the mayor here with senior members of my staff um, what i'll do now since that is going forward i'll release the matrix document to you i'll send that in an email probably tomorrow morning to you that way you have it we can see what they're looking to assess in the department going forward. Okay. Like I've provided you with links with other reports that they've done. Uh, I expect it's going to be somewhat similar in nature, just so you're aware of that. So is this just the job tax, the, the uh, 
the, the tasks for the actual contract with Matrix. That's correct. So it's very particular for um, Northampton. It is, okay. and um, like I said, it's kick in with the superintendents, myself, the city engineer, financial administrator, basically the senior management team here, mm -hmm. and afterwards we'll be touring all the facilities, and then we start our hard work with them. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. What what time was it? It's at 9 o'clock in the morning. 9 o'clock? Yeah. In this room? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it open to... It is not. Private meeting. <clears throat> I will keep you, Could you informed of... perhaps that meeting find out if, if they view a role for this commission? I think the they process. would, I think they probably, I think they will want to discuss it with you, right. either individually or as a group at a meeting. Yes, I didn't know when this wasn't on the agenda, so I didn't know if you wanted to... That's where it now. would be now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I can give a little update on the reuse center. Um, the uh, committee has been um, meeting on uh, once a week in a formal meeting to discuss the different issue, issues. The various people on the committee have been working on Wednesdays and Saturdays when the um, um, Glendale Road facility is open and the hope is that on the week of uh, April 6th, it will be, uh, well, April 1st and April 11th, there will be work days where people will be um, uh, working toward getting it open with the idea that there will be a um, ribbon cutting on April the 22nd and pu various public officials will be um, invited and then the ap uh, actual opening will be on April the 25th. So what you have before you is a pamphlet possibly one of three pamphlets that that will have different purposes for the public and this is to advertise we had uh, a, a moderating um, moderated logo contest and so this is the final logo for um, the recenter um, and this is but it maybe have different colors um, and then the, the purpose of this particular pamphlet is to hand out to the public so that they know that there's some items that will not be accepted, that they understand that this is a membership opportunity, that because there'll be a sticker required. Um, and if you are not part of the Northampton transfer system, there'll be um, uh, a sticker required to use this facility. So if you have any comments, feel free to let me know. What's the twist? I think the twist is that um, pick up, drop off. So it's a swap shop, but um, that is part of the that is under the board of public. I mean, the commission of public works. dealers from picking over the stuff that they want. Pardon me? What keeps dealers from coming through here and just picking out the good stuff? Somebody who's a dealer and got a sticker. No, 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 I understand your question. I'm, I guess there is nothing. And if it, if the if the items go to a to somebody who has a use for it, that's not a bad thing as long as it's not going into the landfill and being um, well, it, it has been discussed in, in the working group, and, and I think the, the feeling was uh, we're, we're not going to try to write some rules up front. If it, if it becomes a real problem, perhaps some rules will be created. But if it, and, and the, there is a sense that we don't want somebody hang, just hanging around. I don't know if that's in the brochure or not. But we, that, that we expect people to come there with a purpose and they can look and take and so on. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and if there's a feeling that people are abusing it, we'll have to deal with it when it happens. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just thinking the average sort of citizen comes up there and finds there's junk sitting there, the less desirable stuff because the good stuff has already been picked over by the first guy through the gate. Go get there earlier in the next time. 
Always a possibility. Stuff is coming in all day. You're theoretically. You're Any more discussion on this topic? Under old business, then, first item is uh, budget update. So the budget, we, Jim, Ann Lee, myself, the mayor, Susan Wright, the business manager, all have been working very diligently on the new budget. It's been pretty fast paced at this point. What we don't have is everything fine, not, I shouldn't say finalized, but enough for, that I want to present to you at this point. We have a number of projects that we're going to be undertaking in the water and sewer uh, enterprise funds, just so you're aware of that, and the stormwater utility. Uh, we're actually waiting to hear back from Bond Council as to how we finance these projects going forward. Um, uh, a lot of this will be discussed on um, uh, Friday morning at 8 o'clock through our Comprehensive Wastewater Management Subcommittee. Mm -hmm. uh, you have sheets in front of you for those who are on the subcommittee of uh, a list of projects in capital years. That's the big 11 by 17 you have in front of you. So bring those with you on Friday morning when you come. But um, uh, the mayor, we're, tr we're actually meeting with the mayor again on Friday to try to finalize what we think is going to be a rate structure going forward that he needs to bring to the city council next Thursday night, a week from tomorrow, not next Thursday, a week from, so that would be the 2nd of April uh, for a conversation with the city council. So he's looking at bringing the water and sewer rates, which are the only two that we actually set rates for, because the other ones, the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund and the Stormwater Flood Control Utility is a budget that gets passed. Uh, we've been working on the, the general budget, parks and cemetery, recreation, uh, highway division, so on. Uh, we've seen some marginal increases. Uh, the mayor's trying to deal with those because the general fund is not doing that well. And you know, one example is we were trying to fund snow and ice by another $75,000 to get us to an even half a million, which if you look at the law and historic average, it's kind of right, but with the, the budget now being fairly thin on the general side, he's looking maybe pulling that back out before it gets approved. Once the snow and ice budget gets approved, you can't take away from it going forward. It's kind of locked in forever. So that's one thing that might disappear. That's Like I said, things are in flux right now, but I do want to have a meeting with the board, or the commission, excuse me, and actually go through it and show you where we're going with capital products in the water, the sewer side, uh, basically, O and M items that have changed, and so on. Um, you know, it's really the mayor's recommendation going to the city council, and the city council approves the rates. So it's it's a big change for us. Um, working with the mayor on Tuesday, we recognize that this is a huge transitional change for everybody, and we think that this year is going to be the year of where we really seek our path, where how we do this going forward, and involving the public works commission at an earlier stage than we have this year, and it's just a transitional period. Um, when, when do you anticipate having that for the um, commission to look at? If we get everything on Friday, we probably can do something, it would probably be the second week of April, I'm scheduled to be out of the office on the week of March 30th. So it'll probably be that following week. And it'll be before the council does a second reading also, just so you're aware of that. And this is strictly setting the rates, not approving any budget. The budget hearings and meetings happen in May and June. Mm -hmm. So we're far further on this, but he had to get the rate structures to the city council. Mm -hmm. So the city council's going to have a meeting on that, I mean, a re first reading on April 2nd? That's my understanding. I was, I was just wondering how Snow and Ice is doing this year. <laughs> Not very well. It's probably been probably more, our most expensive year that I've seen in 15 years here. Not surprising. I'm sure it's, I don't have the recent title, but I'm sure by the time we end it's going to be well in excess of 800000 How much is the budget? Figure? 426 But it, it sounds like it's open-ended. It is. Once it's the council goes matter. into deficit spending, it's an open-ended budget. It's one of the only budgets that you can do this in the Commonwealth that I'm aware of. And most communities do it like this. They, 
underfunded because they're hoping they have a very slender year and they can make by. But the city, the city actually has been very good with additional funding in the past few years of trying to get that up to a an average of what we should, what we should be at. Mm -hmm. And last year they put a hundred thousand dollars into it. So that was quite a quite an obligation on behalf of the city. In thinking about reviewing the budget, first it's clear we're going to get the budget after it's been presented to the city council, which is different than in the past. Mm -hmm. But the other thought I have is, um, in the past we've held uh, morning meetings to review the budget, um, and I, at least in my mind that was to take the workload off of a regular board meeting, which had a lot of other items on it. Now I'm wondering if we can just do the budget at a regular board meeting instead of scheduling a morning meeting. Yeah, they're, I, they're not going to be as in-depth as involved, I think, as they had been in the past. Right. Um, but it's still something that you need to be cognizant of and aware that this is wh where we're looking to go as a department. And I'm still looking for your advice as to these projects, do they make sense? These are the ones that need to move forward. And this is the, not the quantity, but this is the, what we've been talking about is which of these critical projects need to move forward and how do we do it without having huge rate increases? Something marginal that gets us by but gets critical work to be done. Well, go ahead. I was just going to make a comment that it sounds like this is an item for our next commission. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to did I understand you to say this might look differently next year? We might start earlier. Mm -hmm. So that this mm -hmm. is sort of light now. Okay, anything else on the budget? Next item is pothole funding update. So, the governor released through MassDOT the RAP program, which is the Winter Recovery Assistant Program. Northampton has received $151,086 towards this. Uh, basically, it can be used for patching of potholes, crack sealing, other surface defects, including paving projects, repair and replace of signage, guardrails, storm grates, and road striping or painting. Uh, we met with staff yesterday on this money and I'll be making some recommendations going forward to the mayor about how we're going to spend a, a, a good amount on pothole repair and probably the rest will probably go to some paving operation because the way the program's set up we have to have all the work done by June 30th and we have to have the invoices back to state for reimbursement by July 31st. So it's really difficult to spend $150,000 in the paving uh, um, on power repair in that short time frame. So we do have a contract that just got signed and, and going out for um, $150,000 for crack sealing. Mm -hmm. So even though we won't be using it specifically from this fund, we've already dedicated Chapter 90 funds to that. So we are trying to focus a good chunk of money into street maintenance and power repair out of this just to put Time doesn't work right with the funds, but we're allocating the funds further on in the season for that work, just so you're aware of that. Mm -hmm. The mayor signed the, the uh, contract today. It's gone back to the state, so I expect that we'll be seeing paperwork for the expenditures in the near future. Okay. Anything else on this item? Next item is Bridge Street Cemetery. I'll take it. <laughs> Let's see how Ned does with this one. I've got them all prepped for it. <laughs> so, uh, Jim went to the uh, CPC looking for funds for the <laughs> preservation of the Bridge Street Cemetery. Um, $36,900 was requested. However, the CPC only approved uh, $16,400. So, we're looking at a revised scope of services that would look at mapping and historical research and gravestone and assessment at this point. So just so you're aware, we didn't get fully funded for it, but we're still trying to look at making the project go forward somehow and get information that we need while we seek further grants or money from other areas. Tell us again what the money might be spent on. Um, the tasks that were looked at being funded were mapping of the cemetery, historical research, and gravestone assessment. I got that right. 
You did. That was the. Those were the elements of the. It was a conservation plan. You, you, you may remember what three neighborhood association was in, and I think Martha Lyon may have come. She was the. She, did. the, she was the landscape architect that uh, yeah. prepared the scope for the conservation plan for the cemetery. So when it when it the project came in front of CPA, they looked through her scope of work and they just picked a couple things they thought would be nice or important in their eyes, and, the, and those were the elements that Ned mentioned that were funded. When we received the grant contract from CPA, I called Martha and I said, well, does it make sense to do the things that they think are important, or are there other things that we should do given the amount of money that we have? And she said, well, you can't really pick items out of the scope because we had given them a table with scope items and all broken down, and they just sort of picked 1B, 2D, and they added those up, and you can't really do that. Um, in terms of uh, picking a, a reason, you know, an approach that might work. So I had a conversation with Martha. She had suggested that we do sort of a, um, we do a conservation plan, but a reduced scope plan that we could do for the money that we have. Um, and she was suggesting that having some level of plan will help in getting state funding for gravestone assessment and some of the other elements that are really important. So. Um, we had a meeting on Monday with uh, folks from Ward 3 and with Martha to, re to talk about revising the scope and going back in front of CPA to say, well, this is the amount of money. We don't really, we don't think that these three things that you identified are the priority, but would rather do this, and we're going to be seeking their approval to, to vary from the money that was given. But um, it's quite exciting, in, although only partial funding was given because of the the ability to move forward with some type of conservation plan for the cemetery. I think everyone's pleased with it, um, but we have to take a slightly different approach because we weren't fully funded. So I'm just a little confused. So when this this um, sixteen thousand was granted, was that in the second quarter? Or, I mean, when was that allocated? Because aren't they now? Isn't there a whole new round of funding that's being? Considered there by is. the commission. Yep. So oh, it was the it was the previous round. Um, the wheels of CPA turn as they turn. They mm -hmm. have to evaluate the grants and then they approve them and then it's going to go to council and it has to go back to staff. And then I finally I just finally get the grant from from uh, CPA staff that indicates the amount of money that was um, granted and what the what it was granted for. So I only found out recently that but it was the previous round. So it's, there's two rounds a year, right. so this is from the fall round? Correct. Okay, just I was confused no. because of all the yep. media on the other issues. Yep, okay. Was the entire request for the conservation plan, or was there money in there for fencing? Because at one point we talked about fences. We did, it was basically for the conservation plan. <laughs> and the plan would have included a prioritized list of recommended improvements, including Landscaping, access, fencing, uh, headstone preservation, um, other other things. Anything else on this side? Move on to uh, Pulaski Park. May I defer this to you, Jim, since you're the expert on this? <laughs> uh, sure. What do you got? Oh, yeah. We applied for some money. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> You may have heard. Good. Um, so uh, it's been interesting. I didn't realize that uh, I read in the newspaper that it would be the largest grant award ever. Um, so I'm proud to be associated with a project that's so important to the city. Um, but it's raised, um, you know, a lot of discussion among the CPA members um, about the uh, the value of the grant and whether. Um, whether it makes sense to spend that amount of money on the park, and as a community, they were they were concerned as a community didn't know people weigh in. Has there been enough public outreach? Um, so before the last CPA meeting last week, they invited Stimson and the department and the mayor's office to be present for sort of a they called it an open house. Um, Steve Stimson came and gave an overview of the uh, of the construction plans and where the design stood, and we. I thought it was a good meeting. I don't know how many people turned out, maybe 20 people or something. A lot of people had questions about different elements of the park that they were interested in. Stephen did a good job, um, I thought, describing what the project was and, and answering questions and concerns that people had. Um, and then during the actual meeting, there were questions by 
uh, CPC members about the budget and the cost and the mayor. The mayor is fully supportive of the project. He says it's a very important project. He feels that the, the budget that was submitted is, um, you know, is appropriate for a, an urban park like this. And he he had done research on other urban parks and in other communities and indicated that that's about the the range of money that is typically spent on an urban park. So um, April first, I think, is the next CPC meeting. They'll be discussing all of the grant applications to figure out which ones they're going to approve or not approve. Um, I think the CPC, my sense is they're very hesitant to bond projects, and this is a project of the size that would have to be bonded. So that would be a sort of a, um, you know, it, it would be an, an important decision for them to recommend it because that's the way it would be funded. Bonding, of course, ties up money for the length of the bond period, and they worry about those things. As, you, know, as, you know, you can understand why. <coughs> They would deliberate so about it, but um, I think the press has been good. The, the renderings, I mean, the work has been phenomenal. Simpson's work has been really, really amazing. So we've been happy with the project. Hopefully we'll get the funding. Um, I just got an email today about the second state park grant uh, round, which will be coming out. Um, I guess they're having an informational session in May. I didn't read it. I just got the email, so I didn't read it. But the, the subsequent park round will be looking for more state money to construct phase two of the project, which is the overlook, which is the slope going down to the roundhouse lot. So it's exciting. I think everything's coming together in a good way. So it'll be amazing. It really will be. If you, if you haven't seen the plans or the renderings, it's, it's really something else. It's something to excite about. Anything more on this? In the park? Last item on their old business is water asset management plan. So Jim has set out a doodle poll, and there was no consensus as to when everybody could meet. So I was going to ask tonight, do we want to do an alternate Wednesday that's not a regular set of boarding that might work better? I know we don't have everyone here tonight again, but mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do is make sure everyone was here for that sure. plan presentation. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. I could have sent out other other Wednesday dates, as Ned had mentioned, and maybe that would be easier if the board moved one of the meetings to, and I don't know what the, the first agenda item I missed, obviously, but I don't know. We could pick another meeting in um, another Wednesday night in April if that would work, or I could just send, resend the poll out with a couple more dates and see how that, that sounds, works. Sounds okay. like a good idea. Okay, so I'll, I'll do that tomorrow and uh, see if we can get everybody available for that. Did everybody respond? Everybody did, except for Ned, but he, he said he I was, was be there no matter he said what. he was good for all of them. <laughs> um, but that'll be that'll be good. All right, that completes the agenda. Um, so do we have any other items we'd like to discuss? Start with you. Um, well we we brought it up sort of it was mentioned the, the pavement plan. You mentioned the pavement plan. Uh, there was a the letter to the you no, know, it was an article in the newspaper, and they interviewed a bunch of members from the public and the press, universally complaining about um, Woodlawn Avenue and one other street. And, and they interviewed you, and I think they interviewed the mayor, but neither one of you mentioned anything about the plan for this year. And I'm wondering if that's because uh, the plan isn't official yet? The plan is actually posted on the DPW website now. It got posted earlier this week, if I recall correctly. So it's out there. Mm -hmm. The streets we're looking to mill and overlay, reclaim, um, crack ceiling streets, uh, cold in place recycling with an overlay. Uh, it's about a $1.8 million plus dollar contract again this year we're looking at doing. Right. If you want, I can send that to you. If you Well, no, I have it. You gave it to us. We had a meeting about it. So then the, the, the two weeks ago we met about it, and then I think it was the following Monday or Tuesday night there was this article in the paper, and and. I, I was thinking, Ned, tell him, tell him, <laughs> you know, and, and it wasn't there. It wasn't finalized at that point. Now yeah. it is. Okay, that's what I thought. Maybe it was a timing thing. Um, that's great because I think it's, I think it's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Some of those roads are, so you know, really. I mean, the you know the, the members of the public got it right. They're really bad, and huh? um, I think people are really going to notice the work this year. Not that they didn't notice last year's work, but. A lot of this is close to downtown. Higher volume roads, maybe. I don't know. I think it's going to be great. I do too. Okay. Ned, do you have anything else? Uh, the only thing, just a reminder, Friday morning, morning's meeting at 8 o'clock for the conference of wastewater management plan. Jim? 
Yeah, two things um, related to flood control. I just wanted to update you on um, a couple of developments. We we issued a request for proposals for levy assessment work um, this week to a number of firms to propose on. Um, an interesting thing happened. You may remember that Jim Dostal was at one of the previous commission meetings, quite upset about some of the things that the Corps was telling us that we needed to do, including developing a Connecticut River model and analyzing freeboard for the levy system and that sort of thing. I had drafted a request for proposals for the scope of work based on periodic inspection report that we received from the Corps that described all these things, some of which were making Jim mad. And so I drafted the scope, and before we issued it, I sent it to the Corps and I asked them to review it. And I said, you know, just take a look to make sure that what I've taken out of your reports and put in the scope of work is in fact what you want us to do, or if there's something that I'm missing, or something that needs to be added, or whatever, let me know. And about a week later, they contacted me and told me that I had a number of things in there that they weren't asking us to do at this point. And one of them was a uh, freeboard assessment and new uh, river flow study. So hydraulic, uh, hydrologic and hydraulic study of the river systems, they were saying now that they're not asking us to do, but that we probably would need to do those in the future um, for FEMA certification reasons, which we're not obligated to do now. So. The bottom line, I actually sent Jim an email in Florida just so he could relax a little bit more down there. He was pretty worked up when he was... <laughs> okay. um, but anyway, the, the thing that's really important about it is that some of the work was really expensive to do, like a lot of money. And we had planned in this fiscal year um, upwards of a half a million dollars for a lot of that um, engineering analysis that was going to be necessary. And that was a number a firm had given us as a budget. And when I got done taking a lot of the things out in that scope of work and issued it, um, I'd be surprised if the proposals come in at more than, it, I think there'll be at least half of what we had budgeted and maybe less. So it's really good news. That was really good news. So anyway, I wanted to let you know about that. Mm -hmm. I, I would think the river flow would be the purview and the responsibility of the core. Right. Right. Is is every community up and down the river supposed to do a river flow, river study? Well, theoretically, only for the parts of the river upstream. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Maybe we could like team up with Hartford. I mean, we hadn't we hadn't reached the point where we needed to to have this fight with the core. I mean, Jim was ready the night he was here to have a, a big fight with the core. But um, what I was trying to figure out was whether the core had an up-to-date model that everybody had access to. And that's really what I wanted to know. Because if there was a model available for the river and you just needed to apply it to evaluate freeboard in your own community, it might not be that expensive right. of a task. But I, I don't know that. You know, I, I think the, I don't know when the last river model was done. And that was something that we were going to try to find out to figure out what, our, what the cost implications were for us. So, but you're right. I mean, it's really, I mean, that's what the core should be doing. And that was one of the reasons Jim was upset. Doesn't make sense. And then I guess the other thing about flood control is Ned and I had a meeting with the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association and Councillor O'Donnell last week or the week before. And um, we gave them an update on a uh, vegetation management contract that we'll, we'll be able to bid next week on, doing a lot of um, clearing and tree removal on sort of the, the tow tow a slope on some of the Connecticut River levee and some vegetation clearing. Um, there's one area people are very concerned about, these fantastic yew trees at the end of Pomeroy Terrace at the end of the levee that the Corps has told us to remove, and people love them. So I think that was really, we ended up talking about that for quite a while. Um, anyway, so that project's moving ahead as well. Peter? Good. David? No. Rob? I'm good. Motion to adjourn? So good. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.